Welcome to section 7.9, Geometric Sequences as Exponential Functions. So objectives today are to identify and generate geometric sequences, and then we're going to relate geometric sequences to exponential functions. So a quick review of arithmetic sequences. We did this earlier this year. So arithmetic sequences have a common difference, d, and the next term in the sequence is found by adding d to the previous term. So if we have 1, 6, 11, 16, 21, and it keeps going on, what is our common difference? We are adding 5, so our d is 5. The next two numbers would be 26 and 31. The rule for finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence is a to the n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Remember that a sub 1 is the first term in the sequence. So if I was going to use this and write the formula for it, I would have a to the n equals my first term of 1 plus n minus 1, and my difference was 5. And then from here I can plug in and find any number in the sequence. Like I said, this is what we did previously. Geometric sequences are similar. So geometric sequences have a common ratio. The next term in the sequence is found by multiplying the previous number, the previous term, by whatever that ratio is. So if we look at this example, we have 2 goes to 6, goes to 18, goes to 54. And if you look at this, we look at, and we can figure out that the common ratio Every time we go from one number to the next, we are multiplying by 3. So our common ratio is 3. And our next two terms, if we did this, would be 3 times 54, which is 162. And then 3 times 162 is 486. If we don't know what that ratio is, what we do is we take the one number, divide by the previous. And we have to make sure that they all work. So we'd have 6 divided by 2, which is 3. Then we have 18 divided by 6, which is 3. And 54 divided by 18, which is also 3. So if you don't see what the common ratio is, take the term and divide it by the previous term, and it will give you the common ratio. So our geometric sequence has a rule for finding the nth term. And it is a to the a sub n equals a sub 1, our first term, multiplied by the ratio raised to the n minus 1 exponent. So it says write the rule for this sequence, 3, 6, 12, 24, 48. Hopefully it'll identify that the r, the ratio, in this case is 2. We know our first term is 3, our a sub n is our first term 3 times 2 raised to the n minus 1 power. If we are going to find the 10th term, we would have a sub 10 equals 3. 2 is our ratio, and n minus 1, which would be 10 minus 1 power. And this is a sub 10 equals 3 times 2 to the 9th power. And if you plug this in your calculator, you will get the number 1,536. This is how we write the rule for a geometric sequence and how we actually solve for a specific term in the sequence. So here we have geometric versus arithmetic. It says, are the following sequences geometric, arithmetic, or neither? In your homework, you'll have to explain why they are whatever you say they are. So here we have 15, 12, 9, and 6. And if you look at this, we are subtracting 3 each time. Since we are subtracting every time, it is arithmetic. And our explanation why we say it's arithmetic, the common difference is negative 3. We're subtracting 3 every time. The common difference is negative 3. For the next one, we have 40, 20, 10, and then 5. Um, we are definitely not adding or subtracting the same number every time. We could see if we have a common ratio. And remember how we do that is we have 20 over 40. 
which is one half. We have 10 over 20, which is one half. And we have five over 10, which is one half. Now, some of you guys are gonna to wanna to say that this is geometric because we are dividing by two every time. But we don't wanna say we're dividing by two every time because we can't put division by two necessarily easily into our formula. Our actual ratio for this, it is geometric. And our R, our common ratio is one half. We're not dividing by two every time. Technically, we are multiplying by a half. Remember when we said the geometric sequence that we are multiplying by a number? So we wanna say we're multiplying by one half. And the last one we have is one, four, nine. And if you look at this, we add three, then we add five, then we add seven, then we add nine, and this is neither. If we divided these out, we'd find that there is not a common ratio. There is not a common difference. That's what we're gonna say. There is no common ratio or difference. So if you see that it's that way, we're gonna say that. No common ratio, no common difference. That is how we identify if we're geometric or arithmetic. You will have some of these on your assignment today. All right, then we have this here. We says your friend agrees to give you one penny on the 1st of December, two cents on the 2nd, four cents on the 3rd, eight cents on the 4th, and so on through the month of December. How much money will your friend give you on the last day of December? So if you look at this, we're going from one to two, two to four, four to eight, we are doubling. So we are multiplying by two, so our R is two. We want to write the function for this, or our rule, and we have A to the N, is our first term, which is 0 0.01, that penny. Our ratio, we're doubling, so it's two, and we have n minus one for the power. We wanna see what we're gonna get paid on the last day. Well, the last day is the 31st, so our 31st number in the sequence is 0 0.01, and we have two to the 31 minus one, I'm gonna make this a little better by actually taking my exponent. 31 minus one is 30. So this is what we have, 80 sub 31, our 31st number in the sequence is 0 0.01 times two raised to the 30th power. And when you put this in your calculator, you get a rather large number. You will find that the 31st day, you will get 10,737,000 dollars $418.24. Doesn't look like it would happen like this, that you would get this much at the end of the month. But once you start getting toward the 20th, 23rd, 25th of the month, those numbers start getting rather large. I mean, I have in front of me the number that you get for 15th of December, you're up to $163. And then on the 20th, you're up to $5,254. On Christmas, you're going to get paid $167,772 and some change. Exponential growth, if we're doubling every day, it gets really large really, really fast. Here we have weather forecasters predict that the temperature will increase by 10% each day for the next four days. The current temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. What will the temperature be on the fourth day? So we look at this. We have to identify what our first number in our sequence is. This is a geometric sequence. The first day is 10 degrees, so this is our A sub one is 10. Our ratio, remember we are increasing, so our ratio is increasing by 10%. So if you go back to when we did exponential functions, our ratio when we had growth, since we're increasing, we're growing, is one plus. So our R is one plus that 10%, which is 0.1. So our R is 1.1. We're doing this for four days, so our function, just our basic function is A sub N is 10 degrees. That's our starting point. Our ratio is 1.1, and this is N minus one. If we wanna find the fourth day, A sub four is 10, 1.1 to the four minus one power, so a sub four 
And again, you don't have to write this last part out. If I see you have four minus one for your power, I'm good. For plugging in your calculator, sometimes it's easier, less chance of making a mistake to actually take four minus one to get to that three. And when you do this on your calculator, you will get 13.31 degrees Fahrenheit. That's the temperature on the fourth day. And this is how we link exponential functions and geometric sequences. Uh, geometric sequences are basically just exponential functions, except for we can only go by increments of one. That's the only difference. All right, that is all for section 7.9. We did geometric sequences, which are directly related to our exponential functions. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.